Hi everyone, this is Telios, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a very, very, very interesting topic. I'm going to talk about Stanford's Artificial Intelligence Index. So Stanford has been releasing this index for a few years now, and it's really an amazing piece of work. And uh, this index is based on a report that tracks um, what's happening in the world of AI on a global scale. Okay, so today is the 5th of March, 2021, and I think this index was released a few days ago. It's an amazing piece of work. Uh, I'm just going to comment a bit on it uh, and explain um, and uh, share my insights as to where I see the world of AI heading towards though. Okay, um, so let me share my screen first of all. I realized I've not done this. Um, for those of you um, listening only on a podcast, not watching the video, you can find a link to the index in the description. Uh, but don't worry, I mean, you're not missing out on that much because I'm going to be describing basically everything, right? Um, so there are like nine main takeaways from this, uh, from this report, okay? And I'm, go, I'm gonna go through each one of them in turn. Okay, so first of all, AI investment in drug design and discovery has skyrocketed, okay? Um, something uh, worth noting here is that, yeah, many people will say, yeah, no kidding, COVID. Well, uh, this report uh, talks about the what happened in 2020 compared to 2019, right? Uh, so even before COVID, investment in this area was already exploding. And I'm not really surprised because uh, medicine is one of the most impactful areas of, you know, of, of science and the industry as well. And in medicine, we have like, like huge data sets, many complicated problems. It makes sense to apply AI there. And uh, like, if you are in this area, I expect that uh, if you're in the area of, um, uh, of, of AI in medicine, I think you're in a very, very good uh, spot, okay? So if, let's say, I was going to start a new company, I would seriously consider starting a new company in the in this particular area. And by the way, if anyone is thinking about starting an AI startup and you don't have knowledge around AI, feel free to send out an email to me because one of the things I'm doing is I'm mentoring people on how to start AI businesses. And these are people who have expertise in an area. So if you are, for example, a doctor and you want to start a business in this area, then just uh, just drop me an email, okay? Uh, then another very important takeaway, and probably this is more interesting for those who are uh, in the in academia, like I used to be, uh, um, the industry shift continues with many people from academia dropping out and going into the industry to pursue a career in AI. And uh, I'm not surprised because there's much more money in the industry and we see more and more amazing work coming out in the space of um, coming out from like companies like Google, Facebook, etc. And I think this is a trend that's just going to continue into the near future as well. So it just remains to see to be seen whether they, they whether academia can strike back. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think maybe, I, I, there, I mean, this is a very long conversation, but I think there, I believe there are many things that need to change around academia in order to make it more attractive for researchers to stay there. That's not to say that no one will stay in academia, but this is basically my opinion, okay? Then generative everything, okay? So uh, AI systems can now compose uh, pretty much everything. And it's like insane times out there in terms of uh, what we're witnessing around this area. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big fan of this area and I'm also organizing the AI creativity and blockchain meetup in London. Um, also, obviously because of the lockdowns and everything, we've been running things online and it's very likely we'll keep doing a few things online because this helps us reach a global audience. Uh, but um, the, in general, this is a very good area to be, and it goes beyond art. It goes into the special effects industry, and also it, it's not only it's not only uh, AI. I think blockchain is going to play a huge role in this area with NFTs, non fungible tokens. Then AI has a diversity challenge. Uh, I'd say that it's not AI that has a diversity challenge. I'd say computer science has a diversity challenge. So <laughs> AI is just part of computer science. And uh, this is a very long conversation. And, and, and I guess the, the best, uh, I mean, in my opinion, the best way to tackle this is to 
uh, not just focus on AI, but focus on computer science and STEM as a whole, okay, and address the diversity problem there, because it's, it's really not just AI or machine learning, unfortunately, uh, STEM in general suffers from this uh, issue, right? Uh, there are, I think, some, uh, op you know, some optimistic stats around, uh, you know, there's been some progress being made, but, you know, we're not there yet, unfortunately. Then another very important news story, I've talked about this in, in another podcast, China overtakes the US in eight general citations. Very, very important news. China and the US are the two main players in the AI economy uh, and China overtaking the US in general citations is huge. Then again, it's not just about um, quantity, it's also about quality, right? So just because the, the papers are getting more citations, that, that this doesn't mean they're more impactful uh, but what this demonstrates is that china is now becoming an independent player into this area okay it's becoming an independent uh, player as in it's now start to lead its own way um very interesting we'll see what what, what 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 happens around this like china is not the most extroverted country in terms of its industry or the economy everything is heavily controlled by the government uh, I know maybe some people, I don't know, will have their own opinions about this, but in, in, in general, the West has, um, you know, in the West, everything has been pretty open, at least with regards to research. Um, we'll see whether some of, uh, some of the things taking place in China can also go over to the West, or whether uh, the Chinese government is just trying to build a competitive advantage by shielding things from the rest of the world. So like, anyone who's interested in geopolitics of AI, they should keep their eyes on this war between i mean it's not a proper war but you know what i mean between us and and china uh and um another important um uh, sorry another um important development uh the majority of the us ai phd grads are from abroad um i think that's something which you see in other countries i see you see this in the uk as well where i'm based i'm based in london and what you see is that um, you know, in domains like AI, it's the, like so multicultural and you have people from like pretty much everywhere because um, as long as someone's smart and curious, they can be very good in AI. And I think what many people are looking for is they're looking to move into countries like people who are interested in AI to move into countries that offer more opportunities. So I think, again, this this uh, pretty much this stat is the same as you know, for entrepreneurs, like many people moving in places like, you know, um, America and the UK and the EU for this for this region, right? So there's no surprise there. Um, then um, something which might, might, might be a bit worrying and scary is that surveillance technologies are fast, cheap and increasingly ubiquitous. We knew this was going to come one way or another. Um, now AI has... Uh, it makes it easy to enable some kind of Orwellian nightmare <laughs> on society. Uh, and um, there are many, 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 many ethical concerns around how this is used. Um, now, I don't know how this is going to be used, but what I can tell you is that this, we're definitely going to um, experience some very heavy ethical concerns in the near future, because now that the technology has matured to a point that it can start replicating humans, right? Uh, and this gets us to point eight, that AI ethics lacks benchmarks and consensus. Um, I think I'm gonna be a bit pessimistic here while many people are talking about AI ethics, etc. I think that we'll see many bad things happening and then ethics following and discussions following like the atomic bomb, you know? <laughs> so we're probably going to see something similar. Uh, people dropping some AI bombs and then saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Um, I, I, on the plus side, I think that, uh, people are, the society is more open now to talking about this. They, they ask more questions and this has been partly held by, by you know, telecommunications, right? So even if there are bad news, if something bad happens, it's much easier, the news are much easier to travel. So if a company tries to do something which is unethical, then bad news will hurt, will hurt it much faster. In a, you know, talking about uh, PR and, and, and the impact of being unethical in a context. Um, so that's, that's a very big topic. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic, but at the same time, uh, I wouldn't expect anything Anything serious happening this year in the next few years? I mean, people are talking big words, but then again, um, 
I think we're also on a geopolitical level, we're experiencing some kind of, let's say, AI arms race, uh, which means that probably ethics are, are not going to play a strong, uh, that of a strong role, because uh, we might experience a situation where really, um, I wouldn't say we're going to end up with a winner takes all game, but uh, it's a game where there might be winners and losers, right? And th this is, and, and when we're in a situation like this, and ethics is not, it's just, you know, something of an afterthought. And uh, finally, AI has gained the attention of the US Congress. Um, and I think that's not just the US and a few other countries we've also seen like governments noticing AI a bit more. Um, the funny thing is that, you know, when we're talking about institutions like political institutions, whether it's the Congress or a parliament or whatever, um, they're usually a bit too late. <laughs> like they notice things a bit too late. So I guess the fact that in, in Congress in the US has started gaining uh, the attention of uh, AI has started getting the attention of Congress. It means that AI has started breaking into the mainstream, right? Um, so now the full report uh, is really, really uh, long. It's like nearly, uh, nearly 200 pages long. I've not really been through all of it yet myself, but I'd really urge you to, to read it. It's super, super interesting. Uh, but these are like the main takeaways. And, and, and one more thing I wanted to to briefly touch upon before we conclude is the global vibrancy ranking. Okay, so there's this um, um, there, there's this tool, like a very nice dashboard that they provide on the website and you can compare countries against each other in terms of how the performance is in AI uh, with metrics such as research, economy, inclusion. Uh, and it's a very nice graph. Um, it's something which I'm not very happy about is that see the UK where I'm based has dropped a few places. It's still the second um, uh, largest player in the European region, uh, but uh, a few years ago it used to be the third. Um, then again, I guess it's uh, as to how you measure some of those things. So you know, it's not like you know these kind of indices. They're not like um, you know points on a football <laughs> table on a, on a league table right so you can obviously compare different countries but I'm not sure how many full comparisons are between let's say position four and five it's but they can give you like some general patterns and obviously you see that United States is uh, number one no surprise China is amongst the top players uh, Singapore and Switzerland are very very interesting uh, um, because they are in Singapore is in the second position and Switzerland is in the third position. And this is interesting because they're not huge countries compared to, to the US, but they seem to be doing very, very uh, well. Um, and uh, then we have some other countries like South Korea, India, Israel, Australia, and Canada. And then it's, it's the United Kingdom. And this index is taking into account uh, research, and then the economy, and then inclusion, okay? And obviously in all, at least in the majority of the top rated countries, or pretty much most, top, most of them, uh, the greater weight uh, is given to research and development. Okay, and it makes sense because AI is still being actively researched. We don't have something like the Terminator or anything like this yet, which means that research and development are still playing a huge role in the race for AI um, dominance. Um, so I'm really curious to see uh, how this will, will pan out. Uh, I guess in terms of, uh, you know, the United States is obviously still going to dominate the you know, it's good to dominate this area. Um, I guess uh, countries like the UK, maybe they can learn a thing or two from Switzerland or Singapore, which are not like very big countries, but they seem to be doing very well. And the UK has fallen, dropped a few places over the last few years, which is not good. Um, and uh, I guess, um, and, and something else that, another interesting pattern is that in general, Europe uh, seems to not be doing that well in terms of AI and, maybe they should be taking ideas from you know some places like Israel or South Korea or even India, right? So India is not that high. It's actually the only top ranked country, which is not very high in terms of research and development, but it's doing very well in terms of economy and inclusion. Um, India is a huge country. Uh, I think there's lots of potential there, many good software developers. So it remains to see, to be seen how things will unfold there. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the methodology and the metrics behind the index, yes. 
that's going to be too long for what it for for this podcast. Um, but I hope this was very enlightening. Again, um, I'd really urge you if if you're really interested in AI to read through the report. Uh, I might be revisiting this in a future podcast um, because there are some very some excellent uh, pieces of information in there. Um, and um, I, I'm really excited about the future um, and maybe a bit worried as well around some of the ethical issues that we, we mentioned and really interested to see how things will pan out. So um, thanks for being here with me. Uh, I hope you found this informative. Uh, make sure to check out the check out Stanford's AI index and uh, also make sure to check out my website, thedatascientist.com and for those of you watching on YouTube, this behind is Tesseract, the this logo behind is Tesseract Academy, which is one of the one of the companies I'm running, which educates decision makers in the proper use of data science and AI. Um, if you're interested in some training or data strategy ser services, make sure to get in touch. Um, so thank you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.